Hi, everybody. I thought I just set this camera up and I, I looked in the in in what it was capturing and I thought, wow, that's pretty. It's very, very nice out today. Very sunny. How's everybody doing? It's time to draw. <coughs> time to draw. Who's there? Hi, guys. Okay, um, it's a beautiful day here in New York. I don't know where it is, where, where, what it's like where you are, um, but let's get going. I thought I'd put the camera over here because somebody said yesterday, they said, oh, you're, I thought you were, I thought you were a righty and I, and, 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 and I, and I am a righty, but the camera records um, and flips it. So it looks like I'm a lefty. Okay, where's the thing? Okay, there we go. Not really good viewing, is it? Let me just fix this. Oh, sorry. Can't seem to get it to bend. Okay, that good? All right, well, I actually had an idea to draw for you today. Um, it's something that I draw all the time when I'm doing cartoons. Uh, I've sold a, a bunch of these. Cartoonists use cliches. We use, uh, uh, I, want, I don't know what to call it, memes. We use cliches, I guess, uh, given situations. And sometimes we use um, a doctor's office or a lawyer's office or a psychiatrist living room, kitchen, those are all locations and, and they can be cliches because people, you immediately see, I think see better, you immediately see a, um, a psychiatrist's office and you kind of are expecting something particular to happen. And if it doesn't happen, that's often where, where the uh, laughter comes from. So I use um, this, I wish you could, can you really see? I really, um, I use this cliche a lot. I've, I've done many such cartoons and you can, um, have mar many variations on a theme. I don't think that's close enough, okay, maybe. <clears throat> there. So I imagine a bunch of you know what this is already. And uh, you could have... Just a guy sitting there. He's the man running. The hot dog stand. And what's fun about this is that you, he doesn't have to be selling hot dogs. He can, he can be selling all kinds of things. I did one cartoon for the New Yorker and the man, it was a hot summer and the man was selling um, ice cubes down your back. <laughs> and there's some other ones I've done too. So there's your basic. And when I was thinking of this to draw for you, See if you can show it even closer. Um, God, it's hard to figure this out. It's sort of all kind of backwards. And, um, I've actually thought of a cartoon for this. And I'm not going to draw it now. I'm not going to do the, the cartoon for you now because I'm going to submit it to the New Yorker. We cartoonists send in... We send in... Um, what we call batches of cartoons every week, every uh, Tuesday. We um, either drop them off, um, although now we're not doing that for obvious reasons. Um, they're not, nobody's there. I think they're all working from home at the New Yorker. Um, or we email our cartoons in, our, our sketches, um, as it were. And so I'm gonna make this, this hot dog man into a cartoon and I'll, um, send it in the New Yorker, and if they buy it, great. If they don't, 
uh, eh, whatever. They're missing out, I guess. <laughs> they'll, maybe they'll buy something else. Because we, we end up sending in, many of us send in eight things a week. Um, eight cartoons a week or more. Some do more. Um, uh, but I'll show you when I find out whether or not they bought it or not. Because if I drew it now and showed it to you, then they wouldn't buy it. Because it's it's already been out there on you know, on the internet. And they want stuff that's not been published, that's not been out there. So um, let's go back and do some. Let's see who's there first. Who's, who's, who's here? Hi, guys. How is everybody? Monday, week three, four of, of, um, of uh, staying at home. Hi, where's everybody from? Tell me where you're from. I'd love to know where you're from. The other day we had somebody from Ireland, from Dublin. Um, there's a Milan residence where I'm sitting right now. I'm sitting in a little township called Milan in New York, in the Hudson Valley. Um, there was somebody from Pakistan the other day on this stream. Portland, Maine. There's somebody from Canada. Hi, Portland. Um, so it's fun. All right. I'm going to put some gray on this for you so you can watch that. Man, I'm having trouble today with uh, placing it just so. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, uh, I must be dyslexic with it. I can't seem to get it right. I'm going to bring it over here. I had better look on, the, on this side. There we go. Um, so these are my brushes. I'm going to, um, because I'm so, can you see this? There we go. Uh, I'm, I'm not in New York today, but, um, I'm often in New York during this coronavirus time. I'm up in the country. I, I split my time between the country and the city, but I love New York city and I miss it. And I'm gonna, I feel worried for New York right now. Although today I heard there, um, there's a flattening of numbers. There's, there's a plateau of some numbers, uh, deaths, I think. And um, that's good. It could mean something or it could just be a blip. But um, I, I love these, these Sabret people. And then he'd usually have like, selling something there and um this guy doesn't have anything at the moment there's the um the sidewalk actually he's not on the sidewalk this guy's looks like he's on the street it's really bad i'm not i'm sorry that there we go um as I said, I'm gonna make this into a cartoon. Maybe not this particular drawing, I'll make another one. But we could do something, what, what could we do here? Uh, um, I'm just trying to make it visually interesting for you. You could have a lady. And um, This is also another way that people come up with cartoons. It's just by making something absurd in the picture. Um, this looks like a seagull, sort of. So it could be could be a joke that has to do with the beach or you know how seagulls are always eating people's foods, people's French fries. So, I don't have an idea for that, but it's a drawing. Give her some tone as well. I'm gonna make this guy have some skin tone, because I can. Hear the sound of my brush. So 
So maybe you guys can think of a caption for this. What she's saying, what could be on, on the written on the hot dog stand. And sometimes, you know, this will lead to an idea that's different than what you began with. Um, you could think, see, draw this and think, oh, wait, maybe she's holding a cat. Or, no, wait, maybe he's holding a dog. Or maybe nobody's holding anything and she's saying something else. So there's lots of ways to do it. Lots of ways to get at a, a cartoon. So, um, that's all I have for today. I'll let you know. Of course, I won't know until the end of the week if, if I sell the cartoon. And I'll let you know um, who's here. Therapy goal. That's funny. Therapy goal. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if goals are very empathic, are they? <laughs> what birds are empathic? I don't know. What animals are empathic? Dogs. But maybe gulls are good at analyzing people. They probably are. They've been around us a long time. So that's how a cartoonist brain works. Hope you guys are well. I'm thinking of you. This is a rough time for everybody. Um, if you feel like it, pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and draw something. Why not? Um, there's a question. How did you get into the live drawing cartoons? Oh, well, that's a good question. I um, He's talking about... Um, it is a he, right? Yes. Um, the live drawing I do on my iPad, which I do out in the field uh, for news organizations and um, news outlets... Uh, live draw events, I'd live draw political events or cultural events, and I got into it by accident. One time somebody gave me an iPad, this was about four years ago or five years ago, and I just started drawing what I was seeing on the TV, which at that moment was the State of the Union address. Obama was the, um, was it? I don't know if it was Obama. It must have been, yeah. And it was kind of boring, and I was just drawing what I was watching on the TV, and, and this app I use, which is called Paper 53, if you guys want to check it out, it's a great app you can send out what you're drawing immediately on Twitter. Um, and that's what I did. And I noticed that people found it kind of interesting. It was different than anything else that was that was streaming on Twitter at the time. Um, and so I just be, kept doing it for my own pleasure, my own enjoyment, communicating with my followers. And, and uh, it became something that I'm now known for, live drawing events. And, and so people can watch me in real time uh, when I go places. Sometimes, uh, like the Oscars, I've been to the Oscars four times. Um, the Grammys, um, I, I go to conferences, I went to the women's marches, I went to the DNC last year, I'm trying to get, uh, no, in 2016, I'm trying to get there this year, uh, the RNC and the DNC, to the political con conventions. Um, so that's fun. It's fun, it's fascinating. And, and it's, uh, it, it's an interesting way, I think, to cover the news in drawings, in cartoons. I don't, I don't put captions on them unless I'm asked to. Um, I just, just show people what I'm seeing. So uh, maybe one day I'll do an, uh, a demonstration of my iPad if, if you guys are interested. But right now I'm really into this paper because you can hear the paper and I'm really enjoying being in my studio. I'm, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just drawing on paper. So, um, all right, well, that's it for today. I hope you guys are well and I hope you have a nice evening and a good week if I don't see you tomorrow, but I'll be here again tomorrow. At, ten, at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, and take care. Stay healthy. Bye.